Hi, I'm Bob Wormsley from Insidium, the makers of X-Particles and Cycles 4D. And in this tutorial, we're going to look at some of the new improvements which are part of the X-Particles Early Access program. In this video, we'll concentrate on the XP emitter. So, let's get started. You're now able to visualise the forces that are created by some modifiers, which give you a good idea of what effect they're going to have on your particles. In this scene, we've got a particle emitter, and the particles are being manipulated by a turbulence modifier. To get a better understanding of what this turbulence field looks like, we're able to visualise those forces. To do this, we'll go to the emitter, and in the display tab, there is a new sub-tab called modifier field. If we click on this, and click the show field button, we immediately get a graphical representation of our turbulent field. Let's press play. And you can see that by default, the forces are visualized using arrows and they animate in real time with the modifier. So in the turbulence, if I increase the scale of that turbulent field, you can see that that graphic is updated to visualize and represent that. If I reduce the frequency, you can see that those arrows aren't animating as quickly. Let's reduce that scale way down, increase the frequency. And this gives you a really good and a better understanding of what the forces are and what they may do to your particles. We can adjust the uh, modifier field settings as well. By default, it's set to arrows, but we can set this to dots or lines. We can increase the resolution to get a better idea. Let's put it on high resolution. And now you can get a really good idea of this modifier field, but this will slow down your viewport. And we can increase or decrease the transparency of our guides. So let's do another example. I'll just switch off that emitter and that turbulence. And here we have another uh, modifier and another emitter. This is a rotator object. So if I press play, we can see that our particles are being rotated by this rotator. Let's have a look at our emitter modifier field. Click it on. And now we can see we have this um, rotation force, which is forcing these particles to move around in this way. If I stop that and in the rotator, if we give it a fall off, you can say that this fall off will be visualized by the emitter modifier field as well. So let's give this a spherical fall off. And you can see if I make adjustments to the scale of this fall off, it is respected by the particles modifier field. And if I press play now, we can see that it's having the effect. And the effect of the rotator will be lessened as we get to the edge of the fall off and it's not able to escape. So modifier fields within the emitter settings, incredibly powerful and useful tools to help visualize the forces created by modifiers. The XP emitter now has a new setting under the extended data tab. It's called UV emission data. This allows you to create some stunning particle effects using moving image sequence files or video files as part of a texture. These can then be mapped onto particles and the video will continue to play. Let's set it up. In this scene, I have a plane set to the correct dimensions, which will match the aspect ratio of the video I'm going to use. We need to put that video onto this plane. That's the first step. So let's create a new Cinema 4D material and we'll put it onto the plane. And in the settings, we will disable the colour and the reflectance channel and enable the luminance channel. And in this, we want to load an image and the image is going to be our movie file. So this is Mario's fantastic FMX 2018 teaser and uh, it's a stunning piece of work and this is going to work really well in this demonstration. So we'll open that and it comes into our scene. There's a couple of things that we should do uh, before we start. Um, we will, in the editor tab of the material, we'll make sure we've got animate preview set and we'll increase the resolution to say 1024. Okay, so now you can see that this plane has the video and if we press play, it's playing through and there's Mario's fantastic particle work all made with X-Particles, rendered with Cycles 4D. Looking really nice. So that's all very well and good. What do you want to do with a video on a plane? Well, we're going to use this to project this video onto particles, 
and the video will continue to play on the particles. It's going to look pretty stunning. So what we need to do now to get this set up, well, there's a few steps. First of all, we need an emitter, and we need the emitter to emit from the plane. So we'll go to the Object tab, and in the Emitter Shape, we'll put Object. We'll drag in the plane, and the Emit From will change from Polygon Center to Texture. That gives us a new Texture tab. Let's open this. We need to drag in the Material Texture tag, and we want to say Emit Channel None, but we want the colors to come from the Luminance Channel, which is where we've put the video. All right. In the Emission tab, we want it to be a shot on one frame, and we want quite a lot. Let's just say 100,000 particles with no speed. And in the display tab, we don't want dots because we're not going to see the video otherwise. Let's pick, um, well, well, we'll just go with squares for now, but we might change that. Okay. So if I hide my plane now and press play, now we have emitted particles and we can see the Insidium logo on those particles. Um, Let's just emit a few more. So let's do 400,000. Okay, so we've filled in those gaps a little bit. Great. But if we carry on playing, you'll see that this isn't animating. This is just, it's getting the color information from the first frame and it's keeping it throughout the entire animation. So this still isn't right. All right, so let's make it work. First of all, I'm just going to make the emitter invisible and look at the plane again. Now, not a lot happens in the first few seconds of this video because we've got the Insidium logo and then the Cinema 4D logo. So let's just say we want it to start about there, this bit where the smoke comes up. So 236 is the start of where we want this. So let's put that as the start in our material. So we'll click in here, go into the Animation tab, and the Movie Start frame, we want it to be 236 at frame zero. So we'll put two three, six, put a keyframe. Okay, good. And then at the end, at frame 600, we want the at the end frame to be 600 plus 230. So let's just put plus 600 is 836 and hit another keyframe. And you must keyframe the movie start frame from beginning to end. Otherwise, this won't work. Very important. All right. So now if we hit play, we're getting some really nice graphical stuff immediately. Very good. If I go to my emitter and make the plane invisible, it's working. We have started with the smoke, but it's still not animating. We're not getting um, this to, to play on the particles. So the last step is we need to use the new improved XP color modifier to get this to work. So we'll go to X particles, modifiers, control and color. Let's bring it down. And in the color modifier, in the operation, we're going to change it from set color to use texture tag. Let's bring that in. We need to drag in the material texture tag we want to use. The channel is the luminance channel, remember. Okay, so now let's see what happens. And now we are getting the video playing on our particles. So that's interesting. So let's just speed up the playback here. The particles we have 400,000. Let's just reduce that back down to 100,000. And in the display, we'll just increase the size of those squares to fill in the gaps. And I think this should run more smoothly. So not very high resolution because we haven't got enough particles, but as a demonstration, you can see. So now these are particles that are playing a moving video on them, which is working pretty well. And it's actually how Mario got some of these effects to work. So because these are particles, we can now manipulate them. So let's bring in a turbulence object, bring the strength down, maybe the scale up. And we can play this, and as the particles move, they maintain their position and the video continues to play as they animate and we can get some stunning effects. And it'll continue to play and as the particles lose their initial position, obviously they won't make much sense of the video, but you get this incredible abstract colouring of particles 
by using a video. It's a very cheap, very free effect, and it can look absolutely stunning. People won't understand how you've done it. So that is the uh, new mode in the Emitter Extended Data tab called UV Emission Data. You're now able to instance X-Particles emitters, which means you can use them with MoGraph. If we take an X-Particles emitter spitting out these particles, which are being moved around with turbulence, we take that emitter and put it into a MoGraph cloner, it doesn't work. The particles aren't being instanced. We need to use a new setting. To do that, we'll bring in a brand new emitter, and let's call this emitter clones. And in the object tab, we'll change the emitter shape from the default rectangle to instance. This then asks which emitter would you like to instance. So we'll drag in our original. Let's make the original invisible. So now we have a clones emitter, which is emitting particles in exactly the same way as our original. And if we take this clones emitter and drop it into a MoGraph cloner, it now works. We're able to instance those particles. So our MoGraph cloner, we can, of course, up the count of instances, and that will still work in our viewport. We can change the mode. At the moment, it's linear. We can, of course, set that to radial, for example, and now they're cloned in a radial fashion. Let's put it back to linear. And because this is MoGraph, we are now able to use the MoGraph effectors. So if we choose a step effector, for example, by default, the parameter is set to scale. So these instances are being scaled up in a stepped fashion through our cloner object. We can also enable rotation. And if we increase the rotation of our step effector, we are now adjusting the way in which our clones are rotated using this step effector. We can bring in other rotations for different look and we have full control now with X particles emitters being instanced by MoGraph cloners. The XP emitter has a new rotation mode. In this ultra realistic space scene you can see some toy trains orbiting the earth. Now as you can see they don't have any rotation values at all they're kind of pointing in the same direction and just being moved around this earth object by a follow surface modifier and a turbulence modifier. So say we want these to be pointing in the direction of travel. So in the emitter, the existing rotation mode has a tangential orientation. Um, and this will mean that the train will always be pointing in the direction of travel. And there you can see it's pointing in that right direction. So the problem with this mode is that the train is able to kind of turn itself upside down if the turbulence pushes the train in that direction. And obviously you might not want that in your scene. So the old way of sorting that out would be to use the up vector, which is possible when you're in tangential mode. So if we change this to an up vector of y negative, it means that in world space, the train will always be pointing downwards. And there you can see it's rotated it, so it's still following the direction of travel, but it's always pointing in the world downwards direction. And if we cha change that to a Y positive up vector, it'll be the same, but the train in world space will always be pointing upwards. But here's the problem. Let's say that you want your object to be following a uh, surface using the follow surface modifier but you want it to be pointing upwards in relation to the actual object it's following, not world space. So you want it to be perpendicular to the surface tangents of the object. Well, that's where the new rotation mode comes in. If we change this from tangential to the new up vector mode, exactly that will happen. Now the train is following the surface of this Earth object, and it is always facing the direction of travel, and it is always pointing upwards in relation to the specific object that it's following. So that is the new up vector mode in the rotation settings within the XP emitter. Excellent for getting correct orientation and direction of travel when using the follow surface modifier.
you're now able to individually activate and deactivate questions right from within an emitter object. Let's set up a simple scene. So here we have an emitter firing out some green particles of differing speeds. Let's go to the questions tab of the emitter and we will add a question. We'll make it a particle data question based on the age of the particles. And what we're going to say is, if the particles are greater than 20 frames old, then we want to add an action. So we'll add the action, and we're going to make it one of these, an editor display only action, which just is a really good way of working out how your questions are working. So we'll click on this, and once the question is answered, the particles turn into white dots. So let's just change that so it's a little bit more obvious. We'll make it white arrows. And we can see that this question is working. When these particles get to an age of 20 frames or above, they are turned into white arrows. Okay, so we know that that question is working correctly. Let's add another question. So we'll add another one. And this one, let's make it based on the particle speed rather than the particle age. So on this speed one, I'm going to say is if the speed is greater than 250 centimetres, we will add an action. And this action, let's make it, we'll change it to, let's change it to spheres and we'll make them a pretty garish pink colour. So there we go. The particles that are over the age of, uh, over the speed of 250 centimetres are turning into these spheres. Let's make that a bit greater just so there's fewer. So now it's over 300 centimetres speed. All right, let's just add one more question to this then. So let's add another question. And this time we will add a, let's add a particle ID. So every particle is given a number. Um, and we can set that. So we say if, if the particle ID is an exact number, 25, then add an action. And the action is we want to change it to a, I don't know, let's just say a box filled. And we'll make this one, let's make it light blue. There we go. And we'll restart. And there it is. So here is the particle that we um, defined, and it was particle 25, and particle 25 has been made this blue colour. Um, so let's just make this something a little bit, little more obvious. We'll go to that question. Instead of it equaling, I'm going to say, if it is greater than, let's say, 80, turn into this blue cube. So all of these early particles won't. And now when we get to particle 80 and above, oh, we haven't got enough particles. Okay, so let's get the emitter and we'll spit out 30 a second. We'll get there more quickly now. And there, everything over 80 turns into the blue cube. All right, so let's test out this new function. So we have three questions in our emitter, all doing things which are manipulating these um, particles. And we can see them listed in our questions window. But now we're able to activate and deactivate specific questions to ensure we know how they are working and if they're correctly interacting in the, in the scene as we're imagining. So what we can do is we can um, deselect the particle age question and now we're not getting any of those white arrows because we haven't got any particles being answered by that and doing the white arrow action. We can then disable the particle speed one, which is turning them into the uh, pink spheres. So now we haven't got that question working. It's just the particle ID one. Anyone over the ID of 80 has been turned into a blue square. So then we can reactivate those and they'll all begin to act as they should. So quite a simple little improvement, but really, really useful in your workflow if you're using particle questions and actions. If you'd like to try out any of these new features, all you need to do is get involved with the X-Particles Early Access Programme. Full details on how you can do that are available on the Insidium website. So until next time, I'll see you later.